we're gonna start with introductions and then for our icebreaker i'll just ask everyone to say what the last concert they went to is so i'm gonna go ahead and start my name is Roba and I am a senior at Spelman College in Atlanta. I'm studying computer science and I'll be graduating next May. I am an operations strategist within Emerging Nation Africa, which basically means I'm in charge of all things mentor and mentee related. And then um, the last concert I went to was Alicia Cara. She performed in Manchester just a few months ago and I went. So Jeffrey, you're next. We, we can't hear you, Jeffrey. Okay. Um, Jeffrey, we'll put you on hold for a while. Marvelous, we'll move on to you. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Marvelous. Um, I'm in New York currently right now. I graduated from Columbia two years ago um, and currently work for the National Basketball Association, their legal department handling um, legal due diligence for all of our business deals and uh, player investigations. And the last concert that I went to was a concert by Lecrae, who is a Christian hip hop artist. Thank you. Prince, could you please introduce yourself? Hey, um, I'm Prince Abudu, doing a doctorate in computer science here in the University of Oxford. Went to my house um, a few months back because I graduated this year, <laughs> which is funny. But yeah, uh, so in terms of concerts, you know, like the question always gets me because the last concert I went to, this when I lost my iPhone, so I actually don't like anything to do with concerts. <laughs> but but oh good, it was actually in Zimbabwe. Um, there was this artist called Romain Vigo who was coming from Jamaica, so, and this was about two months ago. So it was cool stuff. Besides the the phone. Okay, thank you, thank you, Prince. Um, Tapiwa, on to you. Oh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tapiwa. Uh, I'm based in Iowa, uh, Luther College, small liberal arts college. Uh, I'm an accounting major and business management as well. Uh, you know, I like playing soccer. It's my favorite thing, main thing, I would say. Uh, last concert that I went to was a Diamond Platinum's concert in Minneapolis this summer. So that was a, a good one. Pretty interesting. Okay, you guys definitely do some cool stuff. But um, <laughs> moving on, I'm going to show you guys a brief video. I shared the link with you, but I'm going to share my screen and we'll watch it together. Alongside the phenomenal, matter of fact, the incredible Zania Sims, who will be your facilitators for the entirety of this curriculum training video and subsequent training videos that we will be sending on a monthly basis. So let's define the problem. Have you ever felt as though you need some advice to fix something in life? Uh, maybe it could be pertaining to your career, or maybe opportunities to be tertiary wise education and what you want to do with your life. This is the problem that is faced on African high school parents. They lack tertiary education and career counseling services. So much so that today, 33% of Africans have a high school education. 5% of Africans actually attend university. And of those that are unemployed on the African continent, 60% are between the ages of 15 and 24. Take a look at these statistics. They really are overwhelming. I mean, Africa is a continent of a billion people, and 70% of those people are below the age of 30. The youngest population in the world. In 
tackling the aforementioned problem, we have created Virgination Fellows Program, a virtual classroom that caters for knowledge and skills transfers, mentors in the United States, and mentees in the problem. has free voice calling services on a weekly basis based on our curriculum that we curate. Now our core at Emerging Nation Africa is that we don't view ourselves as mere mentorship programs. We don't view ourselves as short lived organizations. What we do believe is that we are a driving force in advancing African transportation, global skill transfers, and education. For us all day, being an organization, being an not only create opportunities for themselves, but to also create opportunities for others. Please take ownership of this imagination spirit. Take ownership of this mission, because this mission is something that is above all of us, and we can only attain it if we all come together. So I'm going to go into today's agenda. We're going to go over the goals of the training, the purpose of the curriculum, our programmatic pillars, the Emergination Fellow outcomes, and our outcomes as Emergination Africa as a whole during the program, as well as Zania going through the curriculum and timeline, and digging deeper into some of the challenges and issues you may face in your mentee relationship. So the goals of our training today and subsequently are going to be very simple. Call these the three E's. These are to enlighten, equip, and empower. In enlightening, we want you to understand the curriculum and understand the sessions that you're going to be going through. We want to provide you with the re adequate resources and material so that you can be successful during the program. We want you to take ownership of the mission and vision of Emergination Africa. We need to understand that this mission and this vision is above all of these something greater than each and every single one of us. So if we all collaboratively come together and take ownership of this organization, we can attain our goals and objectives and actually fulfill the mission of advancing Africa's transformation through its youth and enable these youths to not only create opportunities for themselves, but to also create opportunity for others. So please view yourself as a part owner of this organization. Very straightforward. Number one, in order to foster community and students, we believe that we are a family in emerging Asian Africa. From our mentors to our mentees to our executive we are family. In addition, we also use our curriculum to execute multiple learning experiences for our fellows. We go into religion and stuff more about our curriculum. This is the mission in Asian Africa. As a platform for data collection and analysis, we really want to figure out if we're solving the problem that we highlighted earlier. And furthermore, develop more innovative ways that we can be perfect. Now, our programmatic pillars are very simple. They stand as the foundation for which our curriculum is Each aspect of our curriculum is centered around what our pillars These pillars are college applicants process, community engagement, career advisement. I'm going to go into the outcomes of each other. So under career advisement, we expect each mentee to come out of the program with a resume and a cover letter and a targeted career program. Under global networking, we're actually going to connect our mentees to admissions officers panels via a video calling session. So the students are going to be able to actually ask direct questions to admissions officers. Additionally, we also have global career panels where we're going to also enable our students to communicate with entrepreneurs as well as leaders in corporations that will enable our students to have some of their questions answered when it comes to career. Now under the college application process, we expect every single to apply to colleges and also be successful High grade in the SAT examination. Under community engagement, our students are going to uh, conduct a media project on their high school campuses and also organize community activism events that actually center the information they get from their mentors to their fellow colleagues, constantly helping 
create opportunities for others. So please take a moment to make a positive impression of the emerging outcomes that we have in our lives. There are seven outcomes that we take a very, very serious. And at the end of the day, we want our kids to come out of the table with one of these things to show us how we want to come. So without a further ado, so just to um i guess cement the outcomes we basically want to have our mentee understand what qualities to look for when choosing a college or university i'm sure we've all gone through this process um when we're trying to go to undergrad or otherwise do i want to go to a public institution private um liberal arts predominantly white or you surrogated like those types of things so basically trying to just help them navigate all of that and another piece is um having our mentee understand the college application process to the united states remember our mentees are based in zimbabwe and so this whole oh this is the common app there's the sat it's something that's new to them and they need to get an understanding of that and then mentee will have an insight into college degrees mentee will be able to construct a resume and answer interview questions mentee will understand and practice the major pillars of leadership through project-based learning, mentee will gain knowledge of time management and effective course setting tools, and the mentee will be able to use networking skills learned to create a board of mentors. So, but now I'm pretty sure the question is, how is all of this gonna happen? So we have a curriculum that we follow, and it looks something like this, what I'm sharing on my screen. So it has a guide of what happens every week. So. For example, we're going to have chapter one, which is focusing on the SAT, putting your best foot forward. It's looking at, can you come up with a schedule of how you're going to study? It's looking at, can you figure out um, what your weaknesses are? Like if you're not strong with those English words, or if you're not strong in math, then maybe you need to focus more of your attention on that and less on what you already know. In another week, it could be focusing on college, like trying to figure out why you want to study in school and then, um, coming up with an essay to impress the admissions officers. Um, so Zimbabweans are very modest per se. So it's hard to try and um, explain on paper to say, oh, I did this coming into work. I did this, I did that. So yes, trying to figure that out. And then another piece would also be writing a resume. And we're also going to have what we call panel sessions, which are not listed on here. But then panel sessions basically um, allow us to have a company, let's say Deloitte, come in and sit down with our students and just talk to them about, let's say, writing a resume. Or it could be Google talking about a day in the life of a software engineer. We want our students to be exposed to these things. So they sit down in a room and then they connect virtually and they have these interactions and then after that, the mentor would come in and say, okay, so how was your session? What did you learn? Um, do you have any questions? Do you think it's something that you start thinking about how you can be intentional about what you're going to do the moment you enter university so that you can, I guess, put your best foot forward and become competitive for those types of things. So um, besides that, we also have our program outcomes, which are well, it's basically what I just went through, but then abbreviated. And this is found on our website, imaginationafrica.org. So you can always go to it and see these at your leisure. So you know, that university piece that I touched on, career exposure. So brief background on Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe got its independence in 1980. And ever since then, we've been trying to build up, you know, to become a better country economically, politically, socially and all of those other aspects but then there's a lot of political instability at the moment so as a student it's easy to think oh my life is doomed i'm just stuck here and all of these things but then imagination is coming in to say can we make you see a light at the end of the tunnel can you think about how you can contribute to the society in zimbabwe by you know going to the goals can you think about what you want to study and how it's going to impact people by in Zimbabwe long term or how it's going to help you um, achieve whatever dreams you hope to achieve so as a student i went to Dominic to show us myself which is one of our feeder schools and when you're there you don't have a lot of exposure you don't have a lot of um knowledge on the different career paths out there for example i only knew that i was either going to become a doctor a lawyer or an accountant but then there's other things there's software engineering there's 
economics, there's actuarial science, like there's a plethora of things that you can do with your career based on your interests and your passions, as well as your talents, a mix of all of those things. So again, as a mentor, trying to navigate through all those things, understanding your mentor, understanding their strengths, understanding, okay, how can I make them be the best version of themselves? But then again, it's a give and take relationship. So you're also you know, gaining something from them. Like you're also learning something about them in the process, learning something about yourself, who you are as a person. Then another piece is professional development. I already touched on the session panels and then panel sessions. And then networking is, we're going to ask you guys to create profiles of your staff with a picture and a little blurb of what you do and maybe a quote to go with it. And then we want to put these up on this site so that when people go to it, they can see Oh, there's Roba. This is what she's doing. This is where she is. Um, and then we're going to also have open office hours where you just say, okay, if you're not asking a question, feel free to contact me at this number or this email address. And I'll be happy to tell you about how I, I don't know, did a project on xenophobia or something like that. And then that network of can we create a community? And after they get through the program, do they also have it in them to become mentors to their peers who are still in school and just foster this pay for what? type of situation so your relationship really with your students it's, it's up to you like we provide a curriculum of this is the, these are the things that you should hit on every week and stuff but then at the end of the day we also respect that it's your relationship with your mentee so please drive with it in any way that you wish to drive it we have had many success stories of our mentor mentee relations and we just want to keep that ball going and then People who are part of the Imagination Board, um, the global team, we have Takuma Shiro, who's the founder, then Prince, who's also on this call, and a couple of these other people. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to make their contacts available so that that community, we can foster the community of everyone, knowing where everyone is, who they are, what they're doing, and you can reach out to them if you have any questions or, you know, you just want to talk about something. And then... After this, I'm going to send you guys um, a link to our technology platform that we're using this year. It's called Shearwater. So Shearwater is basically a platform that allows you to create an account. And then when you're creating an account, it's asking you about your hobbies, your interests, what your major is, and all of that. And then based on the profile that you set up, it's going to match you up with um, your mentee, who's also going to set up a profile. Then we're going to use a computer-based algorithm to try and match you guys up. And then after that, um, you should be set to have that first call with your mentor, with mentee, sorry, where you just introduce each other. And then you take it from there, like you set presentation from the start, like, are we going to be communicating through email? Because again, they're in Zimbabwe. And sometimes when they're at school, they don't have constant access to their phones or to email. So it's trying to figure out, okay, so she's going to have access to a laptop or her email between 2 and 4 p.m. Zimbabwe time. So when can I make myself available to have a face-to-face -face chat with her? That FaceTime, um, that FaceTime is really important like that face-to-face -face conversation of, yes, I know you're there, but then I want you to feel like I'm there. I'm giving you all my attention. And for this hour, I'm just dedicated to trying to help you navigate through things. So outside of that, some students have WhatsApp, some students have phones or Facebook, but then just establishing that ahead of time to say, how are you going to be communicating? And then something else I want to touch on is um, this year we have 35 students from St. Dominic Shishawasha and Dominican convent in Blauayo. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys know those schools, but those are our feeder schools. And then I also sent you guys the FAQ for clarification. But then if anything is outstanding, like if you're not sure about something, I'm an advocate for over communication. Feel free to ask me. You've got my email, you've got my cell number, text me, email me. I will definitely respond with the answer. And if I don't know the answer, I will find someone who knows the answer and we can try and navigate things around. We want this journey to be as smooth as possible for both our mentors and mentees so if anything is unclear just ask and we'll try and clarify that so that we can all move forward so that's about all that i had to present to you guys i'll now open the floor for questions oh jeffrey sorry can you please introduce yourself and tell us the last concert that you went to yeah hey can you hear me on now Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry, I'm late. Um, I'm Jeffrey. I'm, I'm doing my master's at Oxford with Prince. Um, 
last summer spent um, about 10 weeks in Senegal and have been working with an organization there to develop like a global leader, leaders platform. And we've been kind of working with Princeton and Merge Nation um, to see if there's possibilities to expand their platform there. Um, last concert I went to was Christine and Queens um, in DC. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so yeah, any questions to your mentors, to your valued mentors? <laughs> Hey, Ropa, so you mentioned something about the platform um, that uh, we will use as mentors, right? So I'd like to know when when we will be able to see it or like create an account and play around so we can familiarize ourselves with it. So thank you. Good question. So today is the last training session. So after this, I should be able to send out an email to everyone that's possible participated in the training and give you guys a link. So that'll be done this week. Like by Friday, everyone should have received access to Shearwater and they can set up their accounts. And then I'll also provide a timeline of when mentor mentee matching is going to be done. And then when we expect your first call with your mentee to have been and the curriculum and all of those things. Oh, cool stuff. Oh, sorry, actually, another follow-up question. So you talked about panel sessions, right? The the global huh? panel sessions. Is there somewhere where we can we can go and see what kind of what panel sessions will happen, so that as mentors we can have an idea of of the topics? Because I'm I'm guessing that some of our interactions with our mentees will be based on those panel sessions, right? That will be detailed on the curriculum. Like it's going to have a week by week of what's happening that week. So if it's a mentor, please work on a resume with your mentee. It's going to be, that's what you're doing that week. And then if it's a panel session, it's going to say this week, we have a panel session with Deloitte on career building. And then if you want to join, I think there'll be information on how to do that as well. So it'll all be detailed in the curriculum, a week by week basis of what's going on. Okay. Thank you. I have a quick follow-up question on the panel sessions, Ropa. Um, so the panel sessions, are they already um, kind of like outsourced or do we contact the panel sessions or these panel sessions are already planned and we just kind of attend? So they're already planned. Um, okay. Yeah. They're already planned. If you want to join one, like by join you mean participate, right? Or just listen in? Mm -hmm. No, right. no, I mean like participate. Like, how does it work? Do we, or is it, is it primarily for the mentees to participate and for us to kind of reach back out to them and say, hey, how was your conversation with so and so? Or are we meant to also be there with them? Oh, okay. No, it's primarily for the mentees. Okay. Um, yeah, but yeah. Got it. Yeah, and um, let me share this, right? Because cause I was just skimming through the website. Um, and I figured that actually the schedule for the panel sessions is is there on the on the website. Oh, so right. let me let me see if um if I can share my screen real quickly. So I think that'll be helpful to everyone because I was really curious to also see this schedule. So can everyone see my screen? Uh huh. Okay, cool stuff. So so we have the, these these panel sessions, the talk series, right? So, so the main themes are there's going to be a panel session on the university applications and there's also going to be a panel session on intro to professional development and there will be another career session on careers in technology and the entrepreneurship panel session then the careers in finance and professional services so these panel sessions will be conducted by uh, different companies in schools so for example the university applications um, so we have Cornell and we might have Spelman. Um, I think that one is still being confirmed, but professional development will be conducted by Deloitte, careers in technology with Google, in entrepreneurship, um, other companies as well that have already signed up to do these panel sessions. So our mentors won't necessarily have to be in the panel sessions because it's solely for the mentees. But also, this content will be on the portals um, 
on the Imagination Mental Collective, which is the platform that Ropa will share with, with everyone, so that we can see the content before the week, so you're also prepared for it. So it's pretty much what what guides your discussion, the core of it is going to be on the platform, so you have access to this information, but then you can allow the, the relationship to be as natural as possible, and you can always talk about other things, but there's just the basic things we want the mentee to get from your engagement uh, with them. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so, so for the, for the feed and school, the one you say like, DC and St. Dominic's. So do you do you have like a team that you know collaborates everyone there in Beam or like how do you how do you establish like your mentee the mentee? Yes, we do have a team or well, contact person in Zimbabwe who establishes relationships with these schools and then tries and figure out how we can put together our imagination famous class. Oh. Okay. Do the do the feeder schools have like guidance counselors that students are already working with, or how can we make sure we're not like stepping on their toes, or making sure that you know the work is divided in a way that's efficient? I would say no, and this is based on my experience when I went to those schools. Like you have a general guidance counselor who's so going to tell you, who's going to tell you, oh, you need to think about what you're going to do in university, in university. But then that piece on do your research, that piece on what are your interests, that piece on, okay, what type of a school do you want to go to? What majors do they have? Because, you know, we come up with these images of, oh, I want to go to Spelman and become a doctor, but then Spelman, number one, doesn't have a doctorate. Like, just navigating those little details, someone guiding you, say, can you think about this as well, and not just stay, you know, on the basic level. And sorry, um, I would like to actually add to that question, uh, to to the answer, in in the sense that most of these schools were actually working with the teachers that would otherwise be offering the guidance and the counselling. So these teachers, we, we we actually work with them to coordinate the program, and they are the first people who are excited to have us on board, and and they know what the students are lacking, and the fact that we're coming and offering this. To them, it's really fruitful. And also, we train the teachers the same way we do mental training so that we are all on the same page. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, so, with the mentees, are we, are we working on the you know assumption that they are going to come to the U.S. or like study abroad or it's, you know, they can establish a life elsewhere? Like, what, what assumption are we working on? The assumption is they want to go to university outside of Zimbabwe, primarily the U.S., but then we've also had people go to, go on to China and other places. Oh, yeah. okay. 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 If there are no more questions, um, I will then end our conversation. Thank you so much for joining our call. I really enjoyed getting to know you guys and your various interests, which are very interesting. But I um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. And again, feel free to reach out anytime. And I would definitely be emailing you guys with information after this. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey. Oops, let me stop my record. Yeah.